Hello everybody and welcome back to the Little King story playthrough. It is time to take on the next kingdom, New Island. Though I say that, this is actually going to be one of the first instances where the entire kingdom is so long that we're not going to have time to take on the boss in this part, which is balmy. But also, I mean, it will make sense when we've gotten through everything, but it's... it's huge! New Island is easily the biggest kingdom that we will have taken on. I mean, it's an island all to itself, so I suppose they're able to make it quite a bit bigger than all of the kingdoms that we have faced down so far. And also there are a lot of enemies there, and they are quite challenging to defeat. Well, not as challenging as they could be to defeat, obviously, because otherwise that would be ridiculous. Little King Story isn't a difficult game. Why the hell would they do that? Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's totally fine. It's nice and long, and it's great, and also it's got a really amazing piece of music to go alongside it. Now, I believe that uh, we haven't handed in our paintings in a while. So why don't we pop over to Ginger, hand them in, see what he offers us, eh? Seventeen? Jeez, we really haven't been in in a long time, and <gasps> we only have nine left! And we get three paperweights! Now, those paperweights are actually quite useful if you're facing down the tail-only workers, the ones with the massive dragon tail, because the paperweight prevents you from being flung away, basically. So, uh, what you could do is you could attach them to your hardened soldiers, send them in to attack your the, the, the worker onies, and they won't be able to do a thing about it. Unless they choose to go with a different move, in which case, yeah. But, in general, like, yeah. And, oh. I, I'm not liking that uh, popularity ranking. Maybe I am being a little bit of an asshole to my, my subjects. I mean, I suppose it did prevent a lot of them from going to the two funerals that have taken place so far this year. But that doesn't make... doesn't make me feel... Well, like we haven't been that mean. It's just, it's just been the funerals, really, maybe a little bit of overworking them all, perhaps? And yet, there are no quests to deal with, nothing in the Kingdom plan to deal with. All we really have left to do is go take on New Island. And while normally I would probably uh, make sure to choose a specific royal guard, Really, we're just going to be exploring our way through New Island, so it's... We don't need a specific set of... Well, we don't need a specific team. Having the variety could come in handy. I mean, really what you really need is as many hardened soldiers as you can, as many hunters as you can, Maybe a merchant or two and a couple of farmers. But everything after that is just a bonus, really. So the area ahead is still under construction, which is interesting to hear. I know we read that sign when we came to hit this area first, but still. And... Uh, of course, we've got another cow worker only. But he ain't gonna last very long. There we go. Perfect. Uh, 
And are we going to get a new enemy? Nope. That's fine by me. So I suppose seeing as we had a little bit of damage get taken by people there, we'll just throw everyone into the hot springs. Just make sure we're all as lovely and healthy as we possibly can be. Because as I said, this kingdom is long. It's bleeding huge. And I love this music. So, New Island, Jumbo Champloon. And this place is just ridiculous. None of it makes any sense. It's just all really random bits and bobs. Also, this testimonial makes no sense whatsoever. I, I honestly do not know what Jumbo Champloon is trying to say, but we shall just go take him on anyway. So yes, as you can see, there are all sorts of cardboard cutouts. Everything's in the process of getting made, and we have quite a few new Oni to take down around here. So we have the Fan Oni, who will obviously blow you away if you are not careful. Now, your best bet, at least for this one anyway, is to attack him with your hunters, but it is possible to just run straight for him and send in all of your soldiers and deal with them really simply. But I like how we've got all these very technologically advanced only in this area. It just adds to the fact that this place is bonkers. We've got another, well, we've got a new type of worker oni, which is a dragon head. Which will obviously breathe fire at us. They're not quite as threatening, I would say, as the tail oni, largely because of the whole, you know. Those guys can kill you instantly, if you're not careful. These guys... Really not that threatening, as long as you stay out of the way. There's really nothing to worry about with them, at all. And something really strange that happens is if there are any holes that appear, if you just so happen to run up to the hole, you'll get this spotlight to come down on you which will then make it really difficult to see anything. It's really bizarre. I mean, that's this particular section, or this particular kingdom in the game in a nutshell. Everything is just really bizarre. But, yeah, we're just gonna keep on digging away. We'll get through it eventually, we'll just keep plugging onwards. So I feel now is a good time to put, we'll talk about the music for New Island. So the song that we are hearing throughout this kingdom is called Gollywog's Cakewalk. Um, so it's the last movement from um, Claude Debussy's Children's Corner, which is a six movement suite for solo piano, published by Durand in 1908 and given its world premiere in pa Paris by Harold Bohr on the 18th of December of that year. Um, in 1911, an orchestration of the work by Debussy's friend André Caplet was received its premiere and was subsequently published. Typical performance of the entire suite lasts about 15 minutes. Apparently, it was dedicated to Debussy's daughter, um, who he called Claude Emma, but her nickname was Choo Choo, and she was three at the time. And obviously, they're not intended to be played by children, but they're meant to be evocative of childhood and toys. Um, the six pieces in the suite are all, well, they all have English language titles, which is bizarre. Um, but they are Dr. Gradus Ad Parnassum, Jimbo's Lullaby, Serenade for the Doll, The Snow is Dancing, 
the little shepherd in Gollywog's cakewalk, which is what we are hearing right now, which is a really lovely chirpy little song. So the cakewalk bit um, refers to a dance developed by, well, developed from the prize walks held in the late 19th century, generally get-togethers on black slave plantations in the southern United States. Um, so I think pretty much most of the time the music was this kind of upbeat, peppy style of stuff. But I think there's a little bit of a difficult thing going on around the tradition of the cakewalk. Um, the much more difficult situation is the fact that um, obviously there's gollywog in the title because gollywogs are well, pretty much racist ragdolls. It's not how they were perceived at the time. Um, they were just black fictional creators created by Florence Kate Upton that appeared in children's books and um, they were a type of ragdoll and everybody kind of really liked well, a lot of kids really liked them at the time. Characterised by black skin, uh, eyes rimmed in white, clown lips and frizzy hair. Um, at the time of Gollywog's cakewalk, or the composition of it, um, Gollywogs were in fashion. And um, they, they were somewhat reminiscent of the blackface minstrels of the time, so obviously a practice that we don't really see as being okay these days. Um, so, Gollywog's cakewalk ends up being a ragtime piece with its syncopations and banjo like effects. Um, the dynamic range is quite large and very effective. Um, and the B section of this dance is interrupted on several occasions by the Love Death light motif um, of Richard Wagner's opera Tristan und Isolde, marked avec une grande émotion, with great feeling. Um, each quotation is followed with banjo imitations, and the cakewalk, as I said, was a dance with strut, and the dancer with, well, the whole point of these cakewalks was that the most the dancer with the most elaborate steps won a cake. So obviously there was a reward, but yeah, it's a it's a song title that I think has quite a few issues in modern society. But the little tune itself is really quite lovely and really quite evocative of childhood joy. So. Yeah, it was quite quite a nice little thing there about uh, the song. Quite glad I found that. But yes, if you hadn't faced down that spinny night quest, here is where you would be meeting compasses. And actually, we found two types of compasses. So we've got the compasses that do the uh, drawing a circle, which are obviously what we've already faced down, and then we have the ones that stab, and they're very, very aggressive in their stabbing. They're not too difficult to defeat, as you've noticed by this point, but they can be very dangerous. And I will warn you, you are going to be picking up a lot of items throughout New Ireland. Like, it's ridiculous how many items we'll be picking up. And also everyone's going to be, well, get on very low health very, very quickly, I perceive. Because we're already quite low on health and we are far from being done right now. Now actually, here I'm going with the let's try and attack them from a distance, but actually, as you can see, we can just send our soldiers in deals with them an absolute treat. Although, it seems that you do have to kind of um, paralyse them first before our soldiers are able to leap on them with wild abandon. Which is a little bit annoying. But I suppose we can just about deal with that, don't you think? Yeah. 
and it's a good job we did bring a merchant because obviously get big purse. Gonna need the merchant for that. <laughs> And uh, we are out of arrows. Balls. So, uh, I think we're just going to have to just send people charging in and hope for the best, really, aren't we? Thankfully, that wasn't too difficult. But uh, it could have been a lot more difficult, and also that's a... Uh, Something that looks a little bit worrying. Because yes, that is a vacuum cleaner being driven by Oni. I told you this game was weird. This is your proof. It's the vacuum Oni. Like, seriously. What even is this game? <laughs> And obviously, if you're even thinking about building that bridge, destroy the compass first. Don't be an idiot. In fact, there is no way in the hell your Google Carpenters are going to be able to build that bridge with that thing attacking them. It's just physically impossible. And rather annoyingly, two spinny knights well, clockwork knights are waiters on the other side. Bit frustrating, but eh, they shouldn't be too difficult to take down. We've taken down enough at this point to be able to deal with them perfectly fine. And here we have a Craftian who is uh, also not making much sense at all. Bulldozer Christmas. Lovely. So yeah, we, we just kind of need to wait now, which is uh, always a joy. It sounds like these where I'm just like, should I have brought with me more um, giga carpenters with me for this? But I'm just like, oh, you know what? Well, we probably would have gotten this bridge built faster. It wouldn't have necessarily led to a different result. So, might as well just go with what we've got. And also to be fair, these guys aren't going to be a problem and also there's a hot spring just over that way so I think we'll be good. So please, for the love of God, can we heal up? Yes, sir. Whew. Time to uh, get all nice and healthy so we can take on the second half of this area. And if we pick this thing up, it actually brings us a bit of a translation tool. So, if I can get to the bit of information that I wanted to get to, which is somewhere close by. Um, so the message that Jumbo Champloon sent us at the beginning um, reads... Caterpillar King Genius. 
Caterpillar King, Beetle, Adult Hate, Invader Hate, War Hate, Potato Love, Green Pepper Wall. So we've sort of got part of the message translated. Because. Airplane equals king, spaghetti equals live, Christmas equals boring, uh, camel equals genius, bathroom equals criminal, toilet equals enemy, suntan oil equals war, tapeworm equals adult, helicopter equals love, mantis equals invader, and Olympics equals hate. So really what we will, we don't know are what green pepper stands for. What Beetle stands for. We've also got Tapeworm. And Caterpillar. Which is unfortunate. Because I, I would very much like to know the full translation of his statement. But we, we simply just do not have it, as far as I'm aware. But it, it's all fine. Because this is just a, uh, it's just a really fun kingdom, really. Because we've had so many kingdoms where we're just we're just having to deal with gimmicks, particularly the last batch, because there was very little to the War Reward Kingdom. It was just a maze that was very easy, and then a question boss, which wasn't really a boss at all. We had D, well, the um, Prime Time Kingdom, which was just a, a maze again, but it's a slightly different type of maze, which wasn't that difficult either, and led to another weird boss fight. Then we had the joy that was Tiptoe Kingdom, where the kingdom was the boss fight. Which is obviously weird, but fun. And now we get something that's much more typical. It's sort of like coming full circle in a way. Because we began with a kingdom that worked like this, and we're going to end on a kingdom that works like this. And I hate goddamn Metalonies. I mean, it's nice that we can actually deal with them now. Because if we, you can get a hardened soldier attached onto the Metaloni, then obviously it's going to die relatively quickly. But it's just getting someone attached onto the damn thing that's the problem. <laughs> also, so many UMA emerge from these holes. It's ridiculous how many do. Because you're just like. <laughs> I just want my rewards! Stop throwing enemies at me! I mean, by the end of this, I am pretty sure that we are going to have filled up our inventory. Yes, it is possible to fill up your inventory. Which is ridiculous, if you ask me. But I suppose there is only so much that anybody can store, so these sort of things are bound to happen at some point. Now, if we could please just, you know, destroy this hole, that would be lovely, game. Thank you. Please, for the love of God, do not let there be any more enemies in here. Good, and oh goody, it was a big treasure that is, it doesn't tell us to do anything for us anymore. Ah. And oh yay, another vacuumoni. I love vacuumonies, they're ridiculous. And that's why I love them. 
Part of them makes me think about um, Luigi's Mansion, I suppose, vacuum cleaners, video games. It's kind of the go-to, really, isn't it? And lucky another compass, I think. Well, this one's going to get dealt with quite easily. And we are essentially at the end of the kingdom now. We just need to build a lift. Which is what that uh, lovely thing is for. Which we will indeed be doing shortly. Dead Cigarettes Olympics. Um, interesting. Now, actually, I might have found the full translation, or at least the, the, the full cipher, to Jumbo Champloon's message. Which is nice, considering we are basically right outside where he's going to be located. So if you bear with me a few seconds, I should be able to... Uh, do it. So, small king genius. Small king devil. Adult hate. Invader hate. War. Hate. Yes, love. No war. So that is what uh, Jumbo Champloon's lovely letter reads. Sorry that that took a long time to uh, get across, but uh, oh well. Now that that lift is actually the only place that has a Giga Elevator, as it is, I believe, called. Now, something that's also quite fun is that apparently, um, obviously the land itself is under construction, um, but the building block dragons and the eastern-based music that we sort of hear suggests that when the land is finished, it would be a medieval Chinese or Japanese-based land, which is really quite cool. But there we go! So, we are right outside where the king awaits. Hamburger, hamburger, la 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 la. So that's love, love, la 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 la. That's what that reads. <laughs> but you see, oh, we've got we've got people turning up everywhere. Is it? It's obviously been a really really long part. So I don't really want to be taking on Jumbo Champion considering the boss fight itself can take a little bit of a while. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and see if we can get some more treasure perhaps. Um, and oh! Our inventory is filled to the brim. There is literally nothing we can do right now and I'm not taking on a boss fight with an inventory that I literally cannot do anything with. And guys, I'm sorry that I left you at the bottom. I just need to be able to jump to the castle. So, we've made it all the way through New Ireland. Next time, we're going to take on King Jumbo Champloon in what has to be one of the best boss fights in the game, with easily the best boss battle music the game has to offer. I cannot wait. I... Oh my god! I am so excited. So ridiculously excited and just all that dough is... Oh, it's wonderful! Don't know how I'm going to be able to sleep tonight, but we're going to have to because we need to be all ready for the morning. Hehehe! <laughs> Let's go!